The, it's the last day on my vacation. And it's a slow day. I, I poked around in my mess of a toolbox that you just saw. Um, and I found this. Uh, this is an Arduino shield. It's got a joystick, a push button on the joystick, uh, four buttons and kind of a start and select button. Kind of looking like a, uh, like a Nintendo controller. And what I thought I would do today is um, I will put this on an Arduino Uno. Uh, I will write a, a Arduino script that will um, kind of take the state from this shield and send that state over to my computer. I've done so many projects similar to this one. Uh, but anyway, the Arduino will, as per usual, uh, talk to my computer using a, a serial. Um, will design a super simple protocol uh, to represent the current state of the joystick and then on the computer we'll have a Python script um, that will kind of convert the state of the uh, joystick shield to computer input so for example when you when you press up uh, we'll convert that and um, we'll kind of will simulate a press on the uh, keyboard arrow up this is not a very like heavy build thing. Um, I mean, we could we could we could roll the build montage now. And we're done. All right, let's jump into the coding part. Um, we'll start off by writing the code for the joystick. So we'll set pin mode. Button A pin to input, serial begin, and uh, give a baud rate. We'll read the X joystick first, and analog read on the uh, X pin. And now we can print to, to see that everything is working. Oops, let's add a new line here. We'll run this and open up the serial monitor. Uh, whenever I move the joystick, you can see that the values are uh, changing as well. Let's do the um, buttons. So I'm going to create a new variable that I call button states. It's an integer, and this integer will hold all of the values for the buttons, the, the states, the on or offs. And if that's low, meaning that you're pushing the button down, I'm going to do an, uh, a bitwise OR on, on this integer. Okay, time out. Uh, let's take the uh, time here to kind of look at exactly what's going on here. So what I would like to do, I should bring the thing. So what I would like to do here is to um, represent the states of the buttons, if they're, if they're being pushed or not. Um, with a single integer. In the code I started out with um, the number zero and instead of looking at it as a base 10 number just being zero, uh, let's, let's, let's visualize it as binary. So we'll have eight zeros and these are eight bits. Um, they can be either one or zero and I've chosen to kind of represent a, a button pushed as a one and a button that is not pushed as a zero. This is eight bits here, uh, and that's perfect because on the on the joystick shield, uh, I have seven buttons that I need to represent kind of the states of. The first thing I do is to to 
kind of decide which number represents which button. In my solution, uh, I, I have the first digit representing um, the button A. Um, these are all kind of labeled, so A, B, C, D, E, F. Whenever I press the A button on um, the shield, uh, I flip this um, first bit uh, to A1. And the same goes for the other one, so pressing C, B, D. And I could press uh, multiple buttons simultaneously and I would just flip the, the bits accordingly. So say I press A and B at the same time or uh, B and D. I'm, we're working with a regular integer um, and this bitwise operation that we're doing, you kind of think about it in, 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 a, in, a, in a base two representation. Um, but we're constantly working with this integer. So the integer it changes um, as we as we press the buttons. It will just change the, the the real variable that we're working with. And then it's just a matter of sending um, this integer over to the computer, and a Python script will uh, kind of read this integer, do basically the opposite of what we're doing on the Arduino. It will it will kind of check to see which bits in in this integer are set. Uh, and then execute commands accordingly. And that's the, that's the concept. If you'd like to know more about how to do bit manipulation in, in a particular programming language, uh, you could just Google bitwise operations in Python or whatever your, your, your weapon of choice is. I, I hope that kind of cleared up something. Cool. Back to the code. We're going to do the same for the um, button B. But we're going to shift that in once, so that, that can, that the, the second index represents button B. And then we can just do the same for the rest of the buttons. But I'm going to rewrite this in a slightly more uh, compact way. And then let's just print the button states. And now we have the joystick. We have the buttons. Pressing A. B, A and B together. So let's move on over to the Python part. This is the part that will actually read what 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 kind of what's happening on the on the shield, and it will it will convert that to to. But just one last thing before we move over to Python. The thing is that Python will start reading off of this uh, serial stream. It can start read at any point in time, and to kind of make sure that we're, we start to read when we want to read. Basically the Python script needs to know that okay this is the first value representing x. So we're just going to represent that with an s. So whenever Python uh, encounters this s on the stream it knows that okay this is a, this is a new uh, joystick state. So the first thing that we need to do is to import serial and create an instance Arduino uh, and then we're just going to loop. So we'll create a uh, an infinite while loop. We'll read some data off of the uh, the serial stream. If this data is equal to uh, capital S, we know that we've ju we're just at the start. And then let's do the same thing for Y. We'll read the button state, um, and then we can print these values: dx, dy, and button state. And we can see exactly the same thing as we saw on the Arduino serial monitor, so we know it's working. Cool, but now we can uh, start taking action on the state of the joystick. Uh, let's start by creating a, a new function that we call handle um, joystick as arrow keys. And then to kind of handle this, these keystrokes and to be able to handle the fact that we can, we can push down a button uh, or we can hold the joystick in a certain direction. So we don't just want to click the buttons, we actually want to hold them down. And whenever we stop with that kind of the motion or the press of the button, we want to we wanna, we wanna simulate kind of releasing the button. So we'll write some helper functions to do that for us. So this is the function that will be called when, when we hold down a key, when we tap a key. If key is not in uh, keys down, meaning that we're not currently pushing the button, 
Uh, we want to add it to keys down. Uh, same thing in the up function. If key is already in keys down, then we want to remove that value. And uh, we still haven't tapped uh, the button on the keyboard. And for that, we're going to use uh, a library I found, pi auto GUI. So whenever we start pressing down a button, we'll call the pi, we'll call pi auto GUI uh, key down, uh, passing in the key that we want to press. And whenever we release a key, we're going to call the function key up. So if we're going right, uh, key down, right, and we're, we're going to make it easy for ourselves and also release the, the left key since we can't go left and right at the same time. And if we're not going in any direction at all, but the um, joystick is, is just idle in the middle, um, we can just release both uh, left and right key. DX, DY, and I think we're going to need to invert the Y. Uh, so let's run this, and let's see. It's working. Uh, cool. Um, the next step would be to kind of map the rest of the keys to um, other buttons. In the array I have kind of the letter that I would like to type whenever I press a key. So the first um, element in this array will be the character that I type or the button that I type whenever I receive a, a button press or on, the, on the A button, on the joystick. If the button state um, so the first time around in, in this for loop, I'm looking at the button A. So we'll, we'll, we'll press down on the A button on the keyboard. If the key is not set, we'll say key up. And let's make sure to call this from our loop. Global name key map is not defined. Oh, pause equals zero, I believe. Let's, let's try to play a game with it and use it as an actual game pad. All right, the joystick, whoo! Whoo! Um, but I mean, you can, you can use this, you don't have to uh, just map it to keys, you can map it to, uh, I don't know, like hotkeys, and you can do different kind of combination of keys. Um, I don't know, it might be good for some sort of games, like it's, it's like adding an extra keyboard in a way. Um, and you can program it to do whatever you want. You can, you can run scripts whenever you press a button or, or something. You can do whatever you want. Imagination is the only limit. Inspirational talk. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Cool. See you next time.